Kimbark Coyotes. I just wanted to bring a little bit of happiness to your day and talk a little bit about some of our crazy Kimbark critters here. So I thought the first one that would be great to talk about would be Catherine. She's our matriarch snake. Um, many of you know her and love her very much. You know she's our grumpy grandma snake. And I thought we'd talk just a little bit about her. Remember, she is a ball python. She is one of 26 species of ball python, and she is the smallest of all the pythons. Um, they only get to be, on average, three to four feet, although some can get up to six feet. If I were to stretch Catherine out here, she's closer to five feet. All snakes fall under the class of animals known as reptiles. I know the Kimbark coyotes already know what a reptile is, but in case you've forgotten, a reptile is cold-blooded, they breathe with lungs, they have a backbone, they most definitely have scales, and they lay eggs, with the exception of some lizards and cobras, boas, and vipers. They actually hold onto their eggs inside their tummy and the babies come out alive. Pretty cool, huh? Let's get back to ball pythons. So, Catherine is a constrictor. She is not a venomous snake. There is no poison. Notice, the only thing she'll do is probably lick my hand. But when she's hungry, she strikes at her prey. She wraps her body around and she squeezes them until they suffocate. Yikes. Then she's able to open her mouth whole and eat her prey. So that makes her a carnivore. And it also makes her a predator because she is a hunter of other animals. Um, other things you'd like to know is that this is a very gentle snake. They are very shy and they're called a ball python because they like to curl up in a ball and hide in a really dark place. And many of you know Catherine, she'd much rather hide than come out and see everybody on a regular basis. Um, something interesting about these snakes as well is that they're pretty friendly, which makes them good pets. But before you run out and get a python, know that they can live on average 30 to 50 years. Wow. We know that Catherine is about 40 years old. She came to Kimbark um, when she was about 10 years old and she was already full grown. And she has been at Kimbark now for over 30 years. So we are assuming she's about 40 years old. Now, while she is not... The biggest of the pythons, I just wanted to tell you a fun fact, the largest python out there is the reticulated python. It can grow up to 30 feet long and weigh almost 300 pounds. I don't think that snake would be happy with just one mouse like our friend Catherine is here. So most of you know that Catherine lives in the keep room in a cozy container, but if she lived in the wild, you'd find her in Central and Western Africa. She would live in the grasslands and the shrublands, and she'd probably spend most of her time hiding and trying to find food. We do know that pythons can climb trees, although typically they're too lazy to do so. These animals are also crepuscular. Now you might be familiar with nocturnal, meaning they sleep during the day and they're active at night, and diurnal, which means they're awake all day like you and me and we sleep at night. But crepuscular animals are most active at dawn and at dusk. So Catherine is known as a normal ball python. This is the pattern that you would most likely see if you went to a pet store and saw some pythons around. This also provides her with good camouflage in the areas where she would live in the wild. The dark areas look a lot like dirt. The gold areas look a lot like the grasses. This allows her to hide and be lazy like she normally is. Third graders, you learned a lot about camouflage this year in the keep room. Can you all think of another animal that maybe has camouflage? Remember, camouflage helps you hide in your natural surroundings. So a couple of interesting things about Catherine that you might not know is one, she went for two years without eating. She just stopped eating. We tried everything. We tried different kinds of rodents. We tried leaving her alone. At one point, I even blacked out the inside of her container. I made sure she had water, but I left her alone. 
interestingly enough, what we finally did was we put a piece of raw chicken, believe it or not, in her cage and she kind of licked it and didn't eat it. But the very next time I gave her a mouse, she gobbled that guy right up. Crazy, huh? Something else you'll find interesting is that a couple of summers ago, this little lady snuck out of her container and was gone for two months in the summer. We searched everywhere. We searched high, we searched low, we searched every cabinet and all of the places where she normally hides, like behind the refrigerator and in the stuffed animals. We could not find her. Even the custodians, Mr. Mike and Miss Lucia, were on the hunt for Catherine. But one day in August after school had started, I heard something moving and I thought, what in the world is that noise? It sounded like jars clanging together. Well, Catherine had climbed to the top of a six foot cabinet and had wrapped herself around some jars that were at the top of that cabinet. When I saw her, it was crazy. She looked at me and she kind of shrinked back like, oh, I've been caught. So I put her back in her cage. And of course I said, naughty Catherine to her. But later on, I went up and looked at those jars and around the top of one of the jars, she had actually shed all the way around. And the shed was a circular pattern. Very cool, I think. Well, that's all for now, guys. I really miss you. I hope you're learning. Make sure that you stay tuned for more um, episodes of Crazy Critters from the Keep Room. Love you all. Bye.